The Culinary Federation is so much more than a professional association. It's friendship. It's fun. And it's family. Come find where you fit in. Join the Culinary Federation family today. I think you're on mute, Jay. I was going to be like, I can hear you. I can't hear myself. I was saying, Peter, you were staring at the floor. Uh, the, this camera froze, whatever. And I was like, is there something on the floor? Anyways, welcome, Peter, to the show. And Chef Runa. Did I get it close? Runa? Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, welcome both of you. It's a complete honor to have you on the show, Chef. And Peter, if everyone didn't hear me earlier, Peter is one of our merchandising leads for Canada uh, and also the seafood guru, I think. You know a lot about seafood, Peter. Well, um, I, well I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself a guru. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, been doing it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> how, lo- how long, Peter? Come on. Oh, uh, Only like 40 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> The food service industry, Jay, uh, thank you for being so kind, but a few years longer than that. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was awesome. So, Chef, I've got a lot of stuff, but let's let's get you to introduce yourself and uh, talk a little bit about you today. It's all about you. Yeah, my name is uh, Runa Fransett. Uh, I'm uh, living in Stavanger. I'm 25 years old and currently working at a restaurant called Sør. And also a candidate for the Norwegian qualification for uh, the book store. Very cool. Very cool. And you've been a chef for seven years or five years? How long? Five, six years I've been a chef now. And uh, seems like a long period, but uh, it's not really. <laughs> that is so cool. You know what, Peter? Surprisingly, she has to thank the Beef Wellington on directing her career path. Ooh, From being nice. a pastry pastry cook to a chef. Nice. So we have, yeah, the old beef Wellington has always done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so, that- so chef, chef, what what are you doing today with this big and first of all, what is this big fish you have in front of you? This is uh, an amazing sky, which is in the cod family. And uh, I would like to talk a little bit more about the fish and show you guys this beautiful seafood that we have only in Norway, actually. And also we have some raw that I'm going to talk about and some fantastic products from the raw. No way. So what's so special about that fish compared to other types of fish? Uh, so special about the scry is that it's actually going from the parents uh, sea and it's coming back up to Norway to spawn and usually it comes back when it's around five years old and uh, this one I think it's around five years old this is usually the size that we get we also get them a little bit bigger actually and the difference between this and the cod is is that what is actually kind of staying in Norway it stays around the coast so it doesn't swim that much so the the meat on the fish is actually much whiter with the sky, and it's much for, more firm and a little bit fresher. Mm. Chefs must love that. Yeah. Right? We, for plate presentations and stuff like that. I mean, the season is short, so you have to like really use it when it's uh, in season. And if you go to Norway between February and April, all restaurants have the sky on the menu. Wow. Peter, now, Peter, you've never seen something like this before. No, I've I've never dealt with that species, uh, but it's really interesting to hear. That. So, so I, I'm I'm assuming that it is related to the uh, cod family. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like the brother or sister of the cod. Okay, okay, and uh, you know the the fact that you you know you alluded to the the whiter meat. Uh, yeah. That's that's really interesting. 
Um, I'll bet, it, and, and I'm assuming it's very firm as well. Yeah, it's actually much firmer than the cod because it's uh, it's swimming a lot longer. And it's actually that all strice are cod, but not all cods are strice. Oh, so okay. it's kind of like uh, maybe it's making more sense to you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> They're like very, very uh, related, absolutely. But the strice, yeah. is, uh, it's much more exclusive, you can say. Okay, okay. Well, well, let me ask one quick question. Uh, um, obviously, you have access to northern cod and uh, and such uh, there in Norway. Um, th th this fish is it, is it in abundance, or um, is, is it um, certain times a year where you know you would uh, um, you would find more of it uh, as opposed to less? Yeah, you can actually only get it from February to April. So now the season is like ending almost this week, kind of. So this is like one of the last ones that we will have this year. And then we have to wait all the way to next year before we have. Okay. Yeah, and I would assume most of the, uh, most of that, uh, the scree is sold uh, fresh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Usually they, uh, they fish it and it's uh, packed and uh, sent away between Six and twelve hours after it's actually caught, oh, wow. so super fresh when uh, when we get it. Wow, that's excellent. That's great. Yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. So, chef, quick question. Um, so, how do you usually cook this fish then? Like, what's the some of the practices that you see there? Yeah, uh, the fish is beautiful as a pan fried, but it's also really flaky, and uh, it has like when you bake it, uh, you. Almost cannot over bake it. Uh, it's really good as a confit fish, but you can also serve it raw. Like uh, for example, with uh, if you cure it uh, and it stays for a couple of days, it's actually very nice and uh, tender uh, meat. So it must be on. A, you said, like chef, you've worked on some Michelin stars restaurants over there. Do they use this product on their menu as well? Yeah, every everyone use this product really? you, when it's in season between uh, February and April, then you can find it everywhere. It's weird if you don't find it on the menu because then they're not doing seasonal food, which is a little bit uh, stupid, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> You're weird if you don't use this food. I love it. Awesome. Well, we're going to break for a quick commercial and we're going to come back, Chef, and we have some more questions. And Peter, you got great questions, buddy. We're going to bring you on more shows. <laughs> Sure. Right, we'll be right back after this. It's not about turning on the lights, starting the grill, and prepping the food. You put on an apron, flip the open sign, and ready for the day. Regulars sit at the same spot and tell stories that bring smiles. Some days can be chaos, challenging. You persevere because you have an undaunted passion, a calling to make people feel welcome and warm. Guests come and go, some you may never see again. The restaurant business is heaven and hell. It's laughter and tears, forever changing and extremely challenging. When the day is done, feeling exhausted, yet somehow content, you smile, knowing tomorrow you get to do it all again. And you wouldn't change a thing. Awesome. Welcome everyone back. You know what, Chef? Yeah, there's people commenting right now on the screen there about you. Yeah. Thanking you for being here today. Uh, it's so cool. So, Chef, I have to ask you about the ski. I got to say it like that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Is it becoming even more sustainable? And it is. Are chefs, is it? No. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, the sky is actually... Yeah, the, the sky is actually quite sustainable already, but we have this huge company uh, that I actually were working uh, for last week and they told me about this super cool thing that they actually, they are making caviar out of the sky row. So this one, they empty it for the caviar and then they actually have the row sack after and they actually squeeze it and make this kind of fish sauce. And when they have squeezed it, they dry it and then they rehydrate it and they smoke it. So then they make this smoke kind of version. Mm. And the flavor of these two, I was amazed. It's actually really, really, really nice. 
And when you think that uh, that was everything, they actually dried the rosac one more time and then they blitz it. So you get this kind of salt that you can put in the pepper grinder or whatever you want to. And then you can put it on your salad or stuff like that as an extra seasoning. And it's, uh, I was really impressed by that. <laughs> so what's it, what's, give us some of the taste profiles on that chef. What's it kind of taste like? It's the ultimate umami, really. Oh, okay. Uh, I would, uh, I would love to keep this a secret for myself, but I <laughs> that maybe I'm afraid if you're nice people and uh, <laughs> turns out you are. So, <laughs> that is, have you ever seen anything like that, Peter? No, I haven't actually, Jay. Um, and it, it's kind of very intriguing. Um, I, I would suspect that you know those two oils lend themselves to a, a number of different applications that a chef can use in the back of the kitchen, yeah, in the back of the house. I mean, uh, uh, you know, we, we we should be a little bit more resourceful in uh, what we do, uh, you know, uh, with you know uh, seafood that's harvested, I guess, if you will. And, uh, you know, in, in developing new items that can be used uh, in, in, in creative dishes. I mean, I like the fact that uh, they're smoking, uh, smoking that as well. Uh, that, that really, that's really got me kind of, you know. Um, well, yeah, I love yeah. It. it's uh, really interesting. And it, this was just a coincidence that I actually saw it because I was like, what are all these buckets with this sauce? <laughs> And they were like, oh, no, it's just a test project. I'm like, tell me. <laughs> so it's actually not in sale. And uh, I don't think anyone has actually used it yet. But they're working on mm -hmm. a way to actually make it available for chefs to use it, which is wow. awesome. Now, sh Peter, do you see more and more companies like this using every bit of the product now? Like everything of like either for the fish or... <laughs> Beef and things like this. You know, they, they typically use the roe and, and, and such, and then uh, they, they use the fish oil for, you know, supplements and stuff like that, Jay. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I've never really seen uh, many products out there, uh, such as these ones here, that can actually be used to enhance other dishes, you know. Uh, and yeah. I find that, that that is really, really interesting. Yeah, that's so cool. So yeah. chef, so I don't know if you know this, Peter, but we're in greatness in the in the presence of greatness. Chef is also competing for Bocuse, right, Chef? And you're gonna uh, win. You're not gonna yeah. lose, right? You told me you're gonna win. <laughs> I hope so. Um, competing in the Norwegian qualification for uh, the store. So we're actually five candidates now that we were. In. We will be competing in September. So all of us are out of our usual jobs and we're just standing in the kitchen and training for this competition, which is really, really hard to get through. Uh, in Norway, we have people competing year after year after year and uh, it's, it's crazy hard. <laughs> well, you told me how long. So if you, you have to train Peter, guess how long? Oh, gosh. I'm thinking months. Yeah. What is months. it, Chef? Five months. Yeah. I'm actually going out on, like, I'm quitting my normal job next week. And then I'm just going to be training for the competition after that until September. So it's uh, wow. It's kind of like running a restaurant where you have, like, all the different kind of jobs. You are the counter. You are the dishwasher. You are the chef. You are the <laughs> Every everything it's like in just you. <laughs> so you you enjoy competing, Chef? Like, is that something you enjoy like doing? I really, really enjoy it, and part of it is like uh, getting to know these kind of new products. People are uh, very much uh, like to tell us about new products or new cool stuff that they are trying to grow or like new kinds of uh, fish or whatever, because they know that we can use it in a way that it will be showcased to the rest of Norway. Because mm. uh, we get actually a lot of attention around this competition and not only in Norway, but around the world as well. Uh, they actually follow a little bit with the Norwegian competition. 
Very cool. So I'm assuming, I'm just assuming this has never been to Norway, which I am going to put on a bucket list. Yeah. But um, it's because you guys have a lot of Michelin stars over restaurants over there. Now, we Canada, we just recently got some Michelin stars this previous year. And yeah. we're getting into this, understanding this. So dining and being a chef in Norway must be a prestige like profession and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that something think, you're seeing there? Yeah. Actually, to be a chef in Norway was not so cool some years ago. But now it's actually like if I go out and I tell people I'm a chef, people are like, wow, actually, that's very cool. And uh, so it's, it's really <laughs> It's changed, and I think we're going to see a bigger change the next years as well, that being a chef is actually very cool. It's not like something you just do or whatever. And the most awesome thing is that we actually get to do our hobby and get paid for it. It's, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's a total win too, eh? It's so a win. So, Chef, what's, what's your plans? If, if you win all this stuff and you go there, are you going to tour the world? Are you going to open your restaurant? Are you going to do more stuff with seafood? What's your plans in the future? Or do you think that far ahead? Oh, I haven't really think that far ahead. But my plan now is to win the qualification in September. And then my life is kind of planned out for the next two years if I win this competition. And then after that, I'll see where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I sense a cookbook. That's what I see here at show. I feel that. Maybe, right. maybe. So, 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 so we didn't play one of your videos. I forgot about that. My apologies. I'm, I'm fascinated with your with your fish and stuff like this. Do you want to tell us about this video that we're going to see here? On... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this video we're going to see first. Uh, the video is a little bit about uh, the fishermen that go out to fish this guy and uh, their kind of like day routine or uh, uh, yeah. It's more about like showing from the beginning when you actually get uh, caught the fish and then until it's actually on your dinner table. All right. Well, we're going to play this. We're going to come back. And yeah. Peter, we'll let Peter to finish off with some questions he may have on this video, but we're going to watch this and we'll be right back. Sure. That's pretty cool. Hey, Peter. That's uh, very cool. Uh, you know, it's always good to see, uh, you know, seafood being harvested from uh, very cold waters. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it, it, it's remarkable the uh, the impact and the effect the the water has on the actual flesh of the uh, of the fish. Yeah. You know, firm, white, and what? Well, whether it's spree or or a, a Norwegian salmon, um, yeah. you know. And, and we talked earlier about the the fish that this particular uh, species being harvested between uh, February and April. Um, given the limited amount of time that that uh, 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 fish is, is 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 it something that's restricted, like the fishing, or is it just that that fish is only in the areas, uh, you know, and it, 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 is it a fish that migrates a lot to different parts or do it, does yeah. it happen, you know? Yeah, it's kind of because it's not uh, not worth it to eat right. it in April and January. Because if it's not like perfect, like white and uh, right. fresh, it's no point. And okay. actually migrate to a lot of places. So when it's coming back to spawn, it's when we when we get it actually. Okay. Okay. 
and 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 the weather itself uh, during the, uh, the the months of uh, February and April are, are are those generally some of the coldest months uh, in Norway? Yeah. I mean, in Stavanger, where I live, we have like uh, seven different seasons in like one hour. Oh, one wow. minute is <laughs> snowing, like the next one is uh, yeah. raining, and uh, but in the north, it's actually very much colder than in the south. It's quite. Uh, I mean, Norway is a long country, so it's kind of different temperature. But here in Stavanger, we have like uh, more windy. It's not so cold during the winter. In Oslo, for example, it's more, it's more cold. It's not so windy. And the same with the up in north. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of wind. And uh, sometimes we cannot get the fish as well because it's too much wind. So the fishermen cannot go out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, now, is there a particular quota that they t uh, tie to this uh, uh, this particular fish, or is it just the the months? Um, you know. Yeah, I think the fish maybe has like some kind of calendar, so it knows yeah. when it's coming back. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the season is between February and April every year. Maybe it will change if the climate changes more. Yeah. We will. Yeah, because it's important to harvest certain species uh, uh, when the weather is uh, it, or the water is cold. Yeah, uh, during certain times of the year, because uh, yeah. the last thing you want is to, uh, you know, harvest fish. Uh, I, I know we run into situations with uh, uh, North Atlantic haddock and cod and such when it's harvested in warm weather. Yeah. The flesh tends to turn soft and yellowy. Yeah. Know? Yeah, this year we actually have like the season until the actual end of April because uh, last week, for example, it was snowing here. Usually in April it doesn't snow. We usually have like uh, all the flowers blossoming and stuff like that now, but uh, the spring hasn't really arrived yet in Norway. So that's why we can still actually get the really nice sky like I have today. Beautiful. That's great. Beautiful. That's pretty cool, Chef. So, last question for me: What yeah. is your favorite dish? What's your favorite dish to make? Oh, I should say something with Scriden, but well, uh, you, I have some pictures. These are some pictures of the stuff that you have had that you um, made, right? I mean, I love the Scry, and I love kind of all the kinds of fresh fish that we have in Norway because we have a beautiful long coastline. So. We have the access to fresh seafood like almost through the whole year. So I think my favorite dish would be something with, uh, yeah, with fish and some something a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, maybe eat like springtime. Some pickle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because the the menu in Norway changed a lot because we have like very uh, different seasons. Mm -hmm. Now, now how did you find? Yeah, so I just one quick question. Yeah. Um, how is the, the, the uh, given that Norway is the world's largest producer of uh, farmed Atlantic salmon, uh, yeah. is, is Atlantic salmon uh, another big, uh, uh, large consumed uh, seafood in Norway? Or does it? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The rest of the year, people tend to eat the salmon. If you go to a Norwegian store, they usually have the choice between salmon and cod or scry when it's in season and some other small fishes, but these are the huge ones, the salmon and the scry slash cod. Okay. Pretty cool. Well, I, I love Norwegian smoked salmon. <gasps> yeah. Just to die for Peter. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, first of all, Chef, thank you so much. It's got to be late there. Is it really late there? Uh... Yeah, it's uh, actually 9.30 in the evening. Okay. So it's getting dark outside now. All right. Well, it's getting dark at 9.30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that time of year where the sun's going to be up till what, 11 o'clock at night? <laughs> yeah, in, in a couple of months, it will be like sun until 12. And if oh, you go, wow. you will have the sun during the whole 24 hours. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's wild. Wow. That is wild. Well, thank you so much, Chef, for joining us today and being on our show and sharing us a little bit about what you do over in Norway and this amazing 
fish. It's incredible. So thank you so much. And Peter, thanks for joining us. We're going to have you on more shows, Peter. You rocked it, no, today, buddy. I love you, Jay. Hey, uh, I'm available. You just ask and I'll be there. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again, Chef. Take care. Enjoy your enjoy carving that fish up. Uh, thanks. And, uh, and good luck on the competition. We're going to be rooting for you over here. It will be. Thank yeah. you so much, Chef. Yeah. Bye-bye. 